Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is Chris, and tonight I will be your guide on a magical adventure. I am going to tell you the story of the real Sleeping Beauty. But before we begin our story, make sure you are in a comfortable position. If you are in bed, rest your back, shoulders, and head. Allow your eyes to fall closed as you inhale deeply and hold it for a few seconds. Then we exhale, still letting all the tension in our bodies melt away. Let's do the same deep inhale and the same slow, enjoyable exhale. And now, let's repeat the breathing one last time. Does that feel better? Good. Then I will begin the story. Perhaps you have heard this bedtime tale before. Perhaps it was your mother, or your father, or a teacher who read this story to you. You may have liked it then, or not. But tonight, I will repeat the story for you in a new way. When you are settled, close your eyes and allow yourself to imagine a wonderful, enchanted land where dreams come true for those who close their eyes long enough to imagine them. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen in a grand and lovely castle. It was set inside a large, strong fortress, guarded and secure. Around the castle was a deep moat, over which the king and queen could cross if they wanted to stroll in the countryside. Sometimes they left the castle, allowing themselves a bit of time away from the press of their duties. They would stroll, hand in hand, to discover the enchanted forest. You see, when the king and queen were not yet grown, they were little children. And they were friends. They were good friends who loved to come and while away the time in the forest after school. Some days, they would go hunting for mushrooms. Other days, they would swim in the forest ponds. And still others, they would climb up trees together, allowing themselves to get dirty while playing. All these things they did when they were just young children, and not yet responsible for the entire kingdom. And how could they know what the future held? They were not yet betrothed or married. They were not yet even grown. And yet, when they were young, they promised to be each other's friend for the rest of their lives. And so it was. As they grew to teenagers, they remained friends. And they continued playing together when there was time. Unfortunately, there was not a lot of time during the day anymore. Often, the boy, whose name was Stefan, was sent to study in other countries. So that you can learn the ways of royalty and how you should tend to your duties, his mother would say. His mother was the kind Queen Catherine. She knew that Stefan and his friend Lorena were best buddies. 
And she was glad of that for she knew how important it was for children to have a confidant. And she was glad for her son. So, often, she would send for Lorena and have her visit the castle. There was a great big bedroom where all kinds of playthings, musical instruments, and toys were kept. It was in this room that Stefan and Lorena spent a lot of time together. As the years passed, their friendship turned to something greater. Stefan could feel a deep connection in his heart, and he wanted to take care of Lorena, and Lorena felt the same. So, when the day came that Stefan's father and mother the king and queen, said that Stefan should start looking for a wife. He knew what to say. I shall marry Lorena, he told his mother in private. And Lorena? asked his mother. Does she wish to marry you? I am sure of it, replied Stefan. But, just to be sure, I shall get her wish in writing, and then you'll see it too, and you shall be happy for us, mother. Stefan's mother, the queen, was content with this answer. She knew that in order for Stefan's marriage to last for all the long years, to endure through hardships and health problems, perhaps even war and tormented times, he would need someone whose love was unwavering. And, because she had known Lorena since both children were little, the thought of her son marrying this fine and kind-hearted girl made her happy. However, there was one thought that did not sit so well in the Queen Mother's mind. It was the thought that Lorena had no parents. She was an orphan girl, and so she had no family to invite to the wedding. Lorena had been raised by nuns, and nobody knew what had happened to her parents before Lorena was born. She conveyed this concern to her son, and asked him how they could make the wedding party happy for Lorena as well. Did she have any other best friends? Was there anyone else Lorena would want to attend the wedding? It was then that Stefan hit on an idea. Their friends from the enchanted forest, the fairies. Yes. They were like family to both him and Lorena, and they would make good guests. His mother knew about the fairies in the enchanted forest. After all, she had also played there often as a child, and so she agreed that they should be the guests of honor. When Stefan told Lorena the good news, how his mother had agreed that they could be married, and that she was preparing a big party for them in the castle, and that they could invite the fairy friends. She was filled with joy. You could say that there was no happier couple that night than Stefan and Lorena. On the appointed wedding day, all the bells in the land chimed with the glad tidings. The king and the queen knew how to throw amazing parties. And, of course, true to her word, the queen invited the enchanted forest fairies. They all came fluttering in the large hall windows, spreading their fairy dust over the entire castle, upon all the guests sprinkling it in the air and showering their grace and joy on all hearts present. 
Do you have any wedding wishes? Asked the eldest of the fairies, fluttering over Lorena's shoulder. We wish for our marriage to be a long and happy one, for our kingdom to grow in strength, unity, and riches, and for our children to be healthy and good-hearted. She replied, Ah, yes, you will make a lovely mother, said the eldest fairy. And we have been waiting all this time to welcome your little one. Oh, I do hope so, said Lorena. For I have never had a mother. Or at least, I can never remember having one. Perhaps you are the closest thing to me as a mother. And so, I hope to be as kind and generous and caring as you have been with me. To honor you and your future little one, said the eldest fairy. We are all here to grant you the gifts of a mother. We will give you all the things that a mother needs to guide her little ones. Come forward, so that we may bless you with our gifts for motherhood. Lorena stepped forward as seven forest fairies surrounded her. She held Stefan's hand tightly, so that he could feel all the good feelings that she was feeling in that moment. The king and queen, too, gathered around, and the people who were guests at the wedding party came a little closer, so that they could hear the gifts the fairies were granting to Lorena. One by one, they added their gifts, and they were all good things that all good mothers need. Wisdom, strength, courage, love, forgiveness, compassion. These were the six gifts that were bestowed upon Lorena in that magical moment. She kept her eyes closed, breathing deeply, and imagining the little children whom she would love and guide very soon. Her heart was full of happiness and joy and peace. But just then, a cold wind blew through the great hall, and a voice that had not spoken yet was heard. You forgot one gift just as you have forgotten to invite me. It was the voice of another forest fairy, who was known for her mischievous ways. All mothers need sleep, she cried, and lots of it. For you think about your lovely little children, you forget that there will be crying and sleepless nights and nursing and tiredness. As Lorena opened her eyes, she recognized the one mischievous fairy and realized that she had indeed been forgotten. And so, my dear Lorena, I give you a very, very important gift. The gift to fall asleep and stay asleep. No, cried the Queen Mother. But it was too late. The mischievous fairy had sent her whirlwind fairy dust like rain over the hall. One day, without warning, you will prick your finger on the needle of a spinning wheel, and then you will know what sleep is. The mischievous fairy sang in a very mischievous voice. Everyone present sighed and cried and begged the mischievous fairy to take back her gift. They protested that this was an insane gift and made no sense at all. Just then, one more young fairy appeared from behind the curtain and said, Do not grieve, O king and queen. 
and do not grieve, sweet Lorena and my dear Stefan. It is true what the mischievous fairy said, that all mothers need sleep, and I cannot undo what she has done. But I can do one thing, and that is to bestow on you one more gift, which I have not yet given. Oh, what is it? cried Lorena. For only your gift can save me now. The young fairy smiled. I bestow upon you the gift of dreams. It is a very special gift, given to mothers whose hearts are big enough to hold their own dreams. The dreams of their men, and also the dreams of their children. The gift of dreams is the ability to see what others cannot. It is the light that will guide you even in your sleep. It is the gateway to possibility. Just remember this. Those who keep dreaming are those who are truly awake. And with that, the youngest fairy was gone. Lorena and Stefan looked around them. But it seemed that all the other fairies had vanished too. Stefan, hoping to save his new bride from this misfortune, commanded that all spindles in the kingdom should be destroyed. All the spindles were indeed destroyed, and so nobody knew how it came to be. But one day, Lorena was walking through the castle and happened to enter a room. Inside this strange room were all kinds of old treasures, trinkets, and furniture. And there, amidst the dusty treasures, was a spindle. Lorena looked at it with fear, and then remembered that she had also been gifted with courage. She took a step closer, attempting to smash the spindle to bits. Holding a block of wood in the other hand, she came down with such strength upon the spindle that it immediately splintered into a thousand pieces. The wood chips and dust scattered in every direction, one of them landing in her eye. At that second, when she felt the prick of the splinter in her eye, she cried out a little, and a servant heard her. He came running just in time to see Lorena stumble. My lady, called the servant. He ran to catch her and laid her on a bed in the dusty room. Another servant came soon, and they both helped to carry the now sleeping Lorena down the spiral staircase. Stefan was at her side immediately, but it was too late. The spell had been cast, and he wondered how it could ever be broken. He remembered the legends, and tried to kiss his wife's lips several times. Stefan kissed her lips, and her cheeks, and her hair. But, it was all in vain. Finally, he planted one last kiss on her bosom and whispered, Sleep well, my dear Lorena, and may your dreams save you. What happened then in Lorena's sleep? Something only known to her, but I will tell you now, as she slept, she dreamt of her children, too small and tender, yet strong and bold children. They were running amongst fields, it seemed, and amongst trees. Could it be the enchanted forest? In her dream, Lorena took a step closer to the little ones. Children, she called out, come to your mother. I have something to show you. The two children 
a boy and a girl, turned to answer her call. And when she saw their faces, Lorena was filled with joy, for they were the faces of her and Stefan when they were younger. At first, Lorena was unsure whether she had been given a glimpse back in time, or a dream of the future. But all she knew was that in this moment, she felt love, serenity, and goodness. And in this moment, she wanted to stay here with her children, in this dreamlike state forever. Their hands caressed blooms of flowers, and the children skipped alongside each other. The tall grass of the forest swayed in the wind, and Lorena tried to reach out and run after the children. Come, mother, we have something to show you. They both sang in unison. Lorena followed the two creatures, whom she knew were her yet unborn children. She followed them until they reached a little stream. The three of them stood on the banks, and when Lorena looked down, she saw that they were all barefoot. This is the water of time, mother, the little girl said. If you touch it, you become one with time, for the water is always flowing. And what has happened in the past moves ever forward into the future. And touching it, you become one with the past, present, and future. You become a part of time. Lorena looked at the clear water and thought that she would like to go for a swim. It looked so inviting, so cool, so relaxing. Do you want to go for a swim? She asked the children. They smiled and jumped for joy. Hey, yes! They laughed and began to kick off their pants and jackets and jump into the waiting stream. Then I'm coming with you, said Lorena. She dipped one toe in the sparkling waters and then both feet. The stream was shallow, and not deep as she had expected. It felt refreshing around her legs. The water rose a little, and she waded out further, daring herself to enjoy this simple, happy moment. The two children began splashing the water too, their happy peals of laughter ringing like music in Lorena's ears. Somehow, she knew that this was all still a dream, and she had no desire to wake up. The three of them kept on swimming together, happily enjoying the afternoon sunshine. Lorena imagined that life could go on like this forever, and because she knew she was dreaming, she hoped that when she woke up, she would one day give birth to these two beautiful, lovely children. After they swam a little, the children said they felt hungry. Lorena suggested going to look for some fruit trees and helped them to step out of the water back into their clothes, and she used her shawl to towel their hair dry. Then, the three of them began to walk together, hand in hand, in search of fruit trees. We know there are many delicious fruits in the forest, said the boy. There are berries and even wild mushrooms that we sometimes collect. We also found nuts and other yummy things. Well then, you lead the way, said Lorena. And she followed the two little children forward. As they walked, they came to a clearing, where all the grass was a bright, beautiful green. And covering the field were thousands upon thousands of colourful flowers. What is this beautiful place? 
Lorena wondered. As she was still asking herself, six beautiful women appeared in the field before them. Lorena knew at once who they were. The six fairies of the enchanted forest. This is the field of dreams, Lorena, they said. Their words were spoken in unison, almost in harmony, like a very pleasant song. It exists while you are sleeping, and it exists while you are awake. You can choose to come here whenever you like, if you ever forget your dreams. Forget my dreams? asked Lorena. Yes, replied the good fairies of the enchanted forest, again in unison. For we know that dreams come to those who are not afraid to close their eyes and open their hearts to their imagination. And we also know that as you go on to fulfill your duties as a wife and as a mother, it is easy to let those dreams slip away and be forgotten. Do you understand now? Lorena nodded her head in reply. This is what she had also heard from other wise women. That the chores of everyday living were cumbersome and made one lose sight of their childhood dreams. Even of their adult dreams. So, continued the fairies, this is the gift you have been given, to never stop dreaming, even when you are awake. If you feel that you have lost your way to the field of dreams, simply ask your children to lead you back to this place. My children, thought Lorena, and then she understood. Then the fairies began to dance, their arms outstretched in beautiful, graceful movements. She continued for a while watching them, until she let the softness of their dance overcome her too. She began to sway her own body, in tune to the gentle breeze she felt here in this peaceful place. It was all so loving and warm here. Lorena wanted to stay in the field of dreams forever. But she suddenly heard a whisper, the voice of a man awakening her. And then she felt a kiss on her bosom. And all the field and fairies and small children became a blur. When Lorena opened her eyes, she saw that it was her husband, Stefan, looking down over her. She replied to his awakening and touched his arm gently as he helped her to sit up. Have I been asleep for long? asked Lorena. She looked at him and wondered, but his reply put her at ease. Only for a single night said Stefan, and we must have been sleeping together, for all the people in our kingdom fell asleep at the same time as you did, and now we all awake together with the sunrise. Lorena and Stefan kissed each other happily, and she stretched her arms, feeling like it was a little more than just one night. Of course, you and I know the real story. That the whole kingdom, and both Stefan and his wife Lorena, had, in fact, been asleep for a thousand years. It was not the kiss that woke Lorena. It was simply time to wake up. She had been gifted the field of dreams, and had a long and happy time. Stefan and Lorena went on to become the king and queen of their land. When their parents passed away, they governed with love and goodness, and soon 
to them were born the same beautiful children whom Lorena had already met in her dreams. And, true to the fairy's words, whenever Lorena would forget a little bit about her childlike dreams and become stressed with the cares of the kingdom, she would simply spend a little more time enjoying her children. Quiet, happy moments. And, looking into their eyes, watching them play, hearing their laughter, she would remember that feeling of dreaming, and she would return to that beautiful place. The gift she had to dream became the reason that, as a mother, Lorena always got enough sleep. She learned to not let the heavy thoughts of her day keep her awake at night. She learned to cherish the simple moments with her family, to give and receive their love in return. And, every night, she tucked her children into bed, wished them a pleasant journey to the field of dreams, and followed them there. I hope that when you fall asleep now, you will find peace and joy in your heart as you rest, relax, and let your deep dreams guide you to a beautiful realm of possibility. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Until next time.